Cracking here. It's Saturday afternoon. I'm down here in the armory. I'm trying to do my first couple of videos, so I thought today I would talk about some Smith & Wesson semi-auto pistols I have. I have two here, for example. They're both 59 series, third generation pistols. They're almost the same model number. To the casual observer, they might be the same pistol almost, but there are some significant differences. So to start with, this is a standard 5906 pistol, traditional double action, meaning first trigger pull is gonna be double action like you would find on a revolver. As the slide recoils, the hammer's gonna stay locked back, and then you're gonna have what people would consider a traditional single action pull, very crisp, very light compared to the double action pull. We have non-adjustable Meprolite night sights on it, but because of the age of the weapon, the night sights no longer glow. One of the interesting things about Smith & Wesson semi-automatic pistols is they have a magazine disconnect, meaning if the magazine is out of there, if the hammer is cocked back, it cannot be fired. This is an interesting feature. Many people don't like it. I'm always a fan of it. If you get caught in the pig pile and somebody is trying to wrestle your weapon away from you and you had at least control of it this far, you could always drop that magazine, renders the gun inoperable, and then go to other options to defend yourself. The safeties on this, basically it has a slide-mounted decocker, which when you depress it, drops the hammer safely, flick it back up, and you're back to double action just like you would be carrying a double action revolver. So that's the basics of this one. The other thing is it has a steel frame, so it is considerably heavier than a lot of modern striker-fired polymer pistols. This one here is a 5903. Now, frame size, magazine capacity uses the same magazines. Everything is very similar. The major differences are this one has adjustable sights. It is an alloy frame, so it is considerably lighter. This one happens to have FAR R tool, F-A-R-R-A-R, FAR tool company grips on it. The interesting thing about these grips is they're not as soft and spongy as a Hogue, nor as oversized as the Hogue grips for this particular pistol. They're also not as hard as the rubber used in Pacmar grips. They have a very comfortable feel to them, and they are also extremely thin. They're, they basically have the same profile as the hard plastic grips, where other grips for this series of pistol tend to make the pistol extremely bulky. Some other major differences in this one, besides the adjustable sights, everything else works the same. It's traditional double action. So slide comes back, hammer stays locked back, single action. First shot's gonna be double action. Slide recoils, locks the hammer back, single action. Probably the biggest thing on this that people would find interesting. There is no magazine disconnect on this. It has been either disabled from the company or didn't come with it. Uh, very specific law enforcement contracts would have a magazine disconnect removed from it. It's very possible a gunsmith head has removed the magazine disconnect safety on it. Unknown as to why it doesn't have one, but it is a fairly uncommon characteristic of this weapon, but is completely safe. Probably the other big thing that makes this different from the other pistol is this one is ported. I have not shot this pistol yet, so I'm kind of curious to see what the nighttime muzzle flash is going to be with the porting and what type of recoil reduction I'm going to get with it. All in all, a very interesting piece. You don't run across many 5903s. You still run across a lot of 5906s here and there. Both very solid, very dependable pistols. I would not be afraid to hit the streets with either one of them today. Have a good weekend, and I will see you later.